Hebrews 9.22, And without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Hebrews 10, verse 4, It is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Romans 5, 8 and 9, But God commendeth His love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. The blood of Christ is our subject for consideration this evening. And it's really just going to be a basic fundamental sermon on what the Bible teaches, some basic facts about the blood of Christ. A, a verse with which we're all very familiar, Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. What we're essentially going to do is we're going to begin at that verse and we're going to pull the facts from it we can and then we're going to move to another verse and then another verse and just a few more. And we're going to tie those facts together as the Lord Himself, through His Word, reveals those things as we, that have been set there for us to find. Those facts, those fundamental basic concepts about the blood of Christ. Because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Less and less of the world is familiar with that concept this day and age. And even fewer of those who are familiar with that concept are familiar with the truth about what the Bible says about how do you access that salvation that's available because of that great gift of Christ on the cross. Well, those first few verses that, I, that we looked at at the beginning began to tell us some of that story. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission. In other words, if there's going to be forgiveness of sin... There's got to be bloodshed. It can't be animal blood that's going to truly answer finally the problem, Hebrews 10, 4. It's the blood of Christ that answers that problem, Romans 5, 8, and 9. And in fact, that's how we're delivered from the wrath of God. So now we go back to Matthew 26, 28, and keep in mind the context. This is the Passover... We're in the context of the Passover just before Jesus' death, just before He is nailed to the cross for our sins. And He makes the statement, for this is My blood, talking about that fruit of the vine, this is My blood, in other words, it's a symbol of it, of the New Testament, which is shed for many, notice for what purpose? For the remission of sins. So there's our first fundamental fact about the blood of Christ. According to the Bible, the blood of Christ is shed for the remission of sins. So there's the purpose of the shedding of the blood of Christ. You and I can take that and we can understand that. We can help others see that basic concept. Now, let's take a look at Revelation 1.5. We're not going to delve into a deep study of the book of Revelation, but in Revelation 1.5, remember John is there and he sees the Lamb. And he, talk, and he describes him like this in the last part of verse 5. He says, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood. You say, well, that's the same thing that you just read in Matthew 26, 28. Yeah, essentially. But notice the difference. In 26, 20, Matthew 26, 28, he said, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So its shedding is for the remission of sins. Revelation 1.5, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So what did the Christ do according to Revelation 1.5 with his blood? He washed the saints with that blood, right? That blood that he shed on the cross, he has washed those who have obeyed the gospel with it. It's shed for the remission of sins. There's that purpose. Matthew 26.28. Revelation 1.5, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He took that blood that he shed for us, because remember, he became a man so he could die for us, right? Hebrews 2.14, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. 
That's why he became the Lamb of God, John 1, 29, right? The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, John 1, 14, so that he could offer blood on our behalf because that's the cost. That's what death is. The life of the flesh is in the blood, Leviticus 17, 11. And that was the penalty for sin, Genesis 2 and 3, is death. So he came and took on flesh and blood so that he could pay the proper price for our sin. My blood shed for the remission of sins, Matthew 26, 28. Revelation 1, 5, on him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. All right, so think about where you are. And you're, if, if this is all you knew about the blood of Christ, let's say you're just learning about it. You're a person new to the Bible. You understand Jesus has shed his blood for us. Now you understand from Revelation 1.5, somehow He took that blood and He washed us with it from our sins. So there's the cleansing of us from our sins. His blood somehow cleanses us. Alright? So you take a look at the book of Acts. The book that answers, what must I do to be saved? Over and over and over again. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John gave you this, this picture, this revelation of here is God in the flesh, Jesus the Christ. Here is the seed of woman, the seed of Abraham. He has come as the fulfillment of God's promises. He has come to die for mankind. He died for mankind. He was resurrected from the dead. He was seen by many brethren. And then he was ascended to the Father. And the book of Acts then tells that story of the beginning of the church and the gospel being spread to the world so that they can understand that question, what must I do to be saved, which is also that same question, how do I... How am I washed from my sins in His blood? Revelation 1.5. How do I do that? Right? Because at the end of the book of Revelation, blessed are they that do His commandments that they may have right to the tree of life. Well, how do you get that access to the tree of life? How do you wash your sins from... How, do you, how are you washed by His blood from your sins? So Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Paul is talking to the Ephesian elders a group that he thinks he's not going to see again as far as he may know, or as far as he knows. And he says to them, he's giving them this counsel as he's departing from them. He says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Alright? So in his counsel, what he thinks is his final conversation with these Ephesian elders he tells them to take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. But notice that the church of God which He hath purchased with His own blood. So He, here's a new fact. God purchased the church with His blood. So there's the blood again. So let's follow the stitch line, right? 26, 28, this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So shed for the remission of sins unto Him that loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood. So somehow I'm washed in His blood. 20, 28, Acts 20, 28, He's telling the Ephesian elders to watch, out, to, to watch over the church which, which God hath purchased with His own blood through Christ, right? So the church, there's this entity, there's this institution that has been purchased, bought, redeemed with that same blood. So that had, that's somehow a part of the equation. Shed for the remission of sins, washed by His blood, blood purchases the church. These are just facts that the Bible simply reveals to us. So you go to the beginning of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, right? The coming of the Holy Spirit causes a stir. Many people are wondering what's going on even coming up with the notion that these men are drunk. Peter said, these are not drunk as you suppose. He said, this is that, and refers to the book of Joel and quotes Joel 2, 28 to 32 from, from Acts 2, 16 all the way to 21. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then he begins to preach to them about what they've done and what they needed to understand about who the Christ is and what they were guilty of. And in that preaching, he said, they say, men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts 2.37. Verse 38, he says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, 
Paul, that verse doesn't mention the blood. And you're absolutely correct. It does not mention the blood of Christ explicitly. But notice what it does say. Peter, an apostle with the Holy Spirit, told those listening to him, after, by the way, quoting the prophecy from Joel saying, this is that, and that prophecy saying, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved or delivered. And <coughs> after they say, well, what do we do? He says in verse 38, repent and be baptized, every one of you. So that means to change your mind, repent, so that you walk in a new way of life, and then be baptized. That word literally means to be immersed, to be buried in something. Right? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So in the name of Jesus Christ will be the authority by which you're doing that. And notice the purpose of that baptism. For the remission of sins. Well, that sounds interestingly similar to Matthew 26, 28, right? Matthew 26, 28, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Acts 2.38 Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Blood was shed for the remission of sins. Once a person is baptized, it, or when a person is baptized, it is for the remission of sins. Unto that purpose. Well, that sounds... That starts to connect the dots, doesn't it? Revelation 1.5, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So somehow Jesus in his blood washes us from our sins. Well, we learned that he purchased the church with his blood. So that blood that washes us from our sins, he used that same, that same substance to purchase the church, to buy it back, to redeem it. You go to where the gospel began being preached in the, the, for the first time in the name of the resurrected Christ... That'd be a sidebar, because remember, the gospel's been preached ever since the beginning, Genesis 3.15. But the first time it was preached in the name of the resurrected Christ, they preach it, the people say, what do we do? He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Blood shed for the remission of sins. Washes us from our sins in His own blood. Purchase the church with His blood. Now He's saying, repent and be, bap be baptized for the remission of sins. Okay, Verse 41, Then they that gladly received His word... So once Peter says, be, repent, be baptized, then they that gladly received His word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So look, He said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. There were those there that did that, and they were added somewhere. They gladly received His word and were baptized. Then they that gladly received His word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls, Acts 2.41. You look down at verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Whoa. You see it? You see the connection? What do we do? Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Then they that did it were baptized, they were added. We don't know where yet when we read verse 41. Verse 47 tells us where they were added. Praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Notice that salvation went together with them being added to the church. Isn't that the same institution that Paul said to the Ephesian elders? You... Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. The church was purchased by the blood of Christ. Whenever the gospel was preached in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost following the resurrection of Christ, they were told to repent and be baptized for the purpose of their salvation, for the purpose of the remission of their sins. There were those that did it when they did it, they were added to the church. Remission of sins in the church because the church is that institution, that body that was purchased by God with the blood of Christ. 
the church is where I'm accessing that unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So notice what happens. You hear the gospel, you believe it, you repent of your sins, you confess Christ, you're baptized for the remission of sins. The Lord Himself adds you to the church, you're added to that blood-bought institution, which is the church of Christ, the church belonging to Christ. And I have then at that point been washed by the blood of Christ. Unto Him that loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood. That's how God has commended His love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. So notice, once I get into that institution, I've been saved from my sins. And 1 John 1, 7, as a side note, says I've got to continue walking in the light as He is in the light. Right? If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanseth us from all sins. So... I am added to that body which is purchased by the blood of Christ. Therefore, I'm, I'm washed from my sins in His own blood. And as I continue to walk in the light as He is in the light, I'm continually washed from my sins in His own blood while I'm still a part of that body. Basic, fundamental facts about the blood of Christ, brethren. These are facts that our our co-workers, our friends, our neighbors desperately need to understand. Because every man's soul is dependent upon this, these truths. Yes, many people want to affirm gladly when you say this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. People want to say yes, absolutely. Of course that number is not as many as it used to be but it's still quite a number. And even Revelation 1.5 there's many people that want to say yes unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Yes, he washed us from our sins in his own blood. They'll say that heartily. And they'll eat but you start to get into those next few verses. The church is what he purchased with his blood. Acts 20 and 28. Uh, starts to get a little uneasy for some folks. When you're baptized, you're, it's for the remission of sins. Just as when shed, Christ's blood was shed, it was for the remission of sins. And when you're baptized, the Lord himself adds you to the church, his church, the one church, over which Christ is the head, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Well, the church is what was purchased with the blood. He's the head of it. The church is his body. I'm added to the body of Christ whenever I'm baptized by God himself. And there's only one body, Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. So you follow that through. And then you, take, you think about Colossians 1. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. See, in Him, in whom we have redemption through the means of His blood. <coughs> the forgiveness of sins. That's what we have in that. But notice the verse preceding it, verse 13 that we already quoted. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Where? To translate us. He's taken us from one state and put us into another state. What's the new state into which He's put us? Into the kingdom. Well, that's the church. That's the institution that he purchased with his blood. It is that simple. And there is no salvation outside that one purchased institution. Not because I'm biased or a bigot or hateful or anything like that, but because that's just simply what the truth says. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
we've been translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. And at the same time, we've been delivered from the power of darkness. That's a lot like what Paul said to the Romans in the verses we looked at earlier. Romans 5, 8, and 9. God commendeth His love toward us in that, so see, there's the love of God acting on our behalf, right? God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So there's how the exercise of God's love was working. He allowed Jesus to come and die in our stead while we were the guilty ones. That's what Romans 5, 8 is saying is God's love exercised on our behalf. God commendeth His love toward us. Well, how, Paul? In that... See, he's answering the question. God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than, not only did He die for us, but much more than being now justified by His blood. He not only took our place, but now He's even justified us with His blood. Because see, there's going to be some people whose place He's taken, but they're not justified. Are you with me? There are some people whose place He took, but they aren't justified. He died for every person but not every person will be justified that's why the much more than God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us that's a great thing and an unfathomable thing in a sense much more than being now justified by his blood Paul is saying first person plural he and the Romans to whom he's writing and of course any other Christian it would apply to as well much more than being now justified by what means, Paul? By His blood. We shall be saved. Saved from what? From wrath. Through Him. Think about what that means. Now let's follow that stream real quick. This is my blood shed for the remission of sins. Matthew 26, 28. Revelation 1, 5. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He washed us. How? Where? Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. So the church was purchased. The people heard the gospel, Acts chapter 2. They were added by the Lord to the church, which is purchased by the blood. They were baptized for the remission of sins. And at that point, added by the Lord to the church. He delivered us, Colossians 1, 13 and 14, from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Notice that. It's the kingdom of His Son. It's the kingdom of Christ. It's the church. <clears throat> Jesus said, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The idea being there, I'm going to build my church, Peter, and I'm basing it on that foundational rock statement you've made that I am the Christ. And whenever I, and I'm going to build my church and I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. The church and the kingdom, are inter, that's an, those are interchangeable terms. They're the same institution. That would then mean that when He translated us into the kingdom, Colossians 1, 13 and 14, He translated us into the church, delivering us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have, in whom, you hear that? In whom, in whom, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. 
You see, without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. It is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. And Jesus said very plainly, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. After Paul had told, or before Paul had told those brethren in Rome, God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. He began that book by saying in Romans 1, 16 and 17, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Why is it the power of God? Because it's the message that claims that contains that soul cleansing ability. It's the message that tells you He purchased this institution, this entity. If you'll be added to it, you can be saved. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the good news, the glad tidings of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That is, from the Jewish person to the Gentile. In other words, the faith of the Jew to the faith of the Gentile. For, to every person, no matter who you are. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. In other words, how, do I be, how am I made right in God's sight? You're purchased by the blood. Washed from your sins in the blood. Added to the body of Christ. Added to the kingdom. Added to the church. All of those are saying the same thing. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's what we've got to do, brethren. It starts there. People need to hear the word of God. They need to understand this is the truth. That's where faith begins. You hear the word of God. Once you hear that word, you then believe it. For if you believe not that I am He, you shall die in your sins. If you don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, the one that came to die for us, the one that offered Himself on our behalf, that shed His blood for us, <coughs> you're missing the message if you don't believe that. Once you hear, once you believe, then you repent of your sins. You say, I'm going to change my mind to walk in a new way. Then because of that, of the new belief you have, you're going to confess Christ. You're willing to say, he is the Son of God. He is God in the flesh. And then you're baptized for the remission of sins. In other words, shall we say you're washed by the blood of Christ? Because you're not washed by the blood of Christ until you've been baptized for the remission of your sins. That's why Paul said, Romans 6, 3 and 4, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. Where did He shed His blood? In His death. Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that, like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Because now we have life. Because we've been washed from our sins. We're in that blood-bought institution. We've obeyed the gospel. God's added us to the church, that institution. Delivered from the power, or from the wrath, from the power of darkness, from the wrath of God. We're in, we're in Christ, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. So when you obey the gospel of Christ, you've heard it, you've believed it, you've confessed Christ, you've repented of your sins, you've been baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins, and then there's that continual walk. Because you can't continue to be cleansed by the blood of Christ without that continued walk of faithfulness. Not sinless perfection, but faithfulness. 1 John 1, 7. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. <coughs> if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we, say, if, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Talking to Christians. Once you stumble as a Christian, what do you do? You make it right. If we say that we have not sinned, we, did, we make Him a liar and His Word is not in us. If you've never obeyed the gospel of Christ, why not tonight? If you have obeyed and you strayed away, why not get back up and keep walking in the light? 
so that you can keep being cleansed by that blood in that one blood bought institution. Some simple, fundamental facts about the blood of Christ. We can help you. Please come as we stand and as we sing.